So we don't want all the mean people, right? So we want to be able to obey, learn fast, learn quick, so you can get to the next level. So we can go from second to third grade, amen? Some of us are stuck in second grade. Why? It's because we've been rebelling. So submission, obedience. Another word in spiritual alignment is God sets up this order, but we need to obey. We as believers need to obey. And then finally, unity through spiritual alignment in the family of God. And I'm talking about the family of God of believers. In Colossians, oh, 1 Corinthians, excuse me, 12, 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular, and God has set some in the church. First, apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Um, when we went through the spiritual gifts, I went in debt, in extensively in depth on what all this order is. So there's an order in the church, and it begins with the apostle, right? But the apostle is submitted unto the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of the body. But he has established, uh, Paul wrote that uh, God has established that the apostles are going to be the, the leaders in there, and then uh, secondarily prophets. Now we know, um, if you know about the fivefold ministry, there's the apostle, the prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. But we see that two are kind of like missing, quote unquote, right? Um, very briefly, you get the apostles there. And then, uh, secondarily, prophets. Now, a prophet is somebody, yes, can, can, uh, can tell the future, you know, will speak about the future, foretell the future, right? But the apostle will also be an inspired speaker. So a pastor fits into that category where they receive revelation and they'll be able to preach the word of God. So they're an inspired speaker. And then thirdly, he jumps to teachers, right? So teachers, all pastors, pastors are teachers. You need to know the word of God. A pastor that does not know the, the word of God is truly not, not a pastor because if you don't know the word of God, how are you going to preach the word of God, right? So we're, we're all teaching pastors. Okay, our style may not be like a teacher. Well, the next, the next, I'm going to give you three points. One, two, three. Okay, our styles might be different, and, and that's okay. Style is okay as long as the content is, is, is uh, rightly dividing the word. Amen? Oh, but you forgot the evangelist, Pastor. Well, evangelists are normally outward. They're out there. Okay, so they're not in the church. They, 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 they're, they're recognized and they're appreciated in the church. But the evangelist is the one that normally is going to be sent out. So they're not really in this hierarchy that the Apostle Paul had laid out in 1 Corinthians. And you notice that um, you have people that have miracles, okay, after the teachers. That's, that's kind of high. They're not fivefold ministry, but they're people. So not uh, everybody think oh, only the pastor can have the, the working of miracles. No, no, it's one of you, one or more of you that have this working of miracles, these gifts. The gifts of healing. So it's not only the pastor that has that gift. You, as we learned uh, several weeks ago, that the people, the gifts of help. The praise and worship here is not here for performance. The praise and worship is in the gifts of helps, the gift of helps. They're here to help uh, one, help us to enter into the presence, right? And to invite the presence of, of God. That's what their purpose is. They're not here to show off their talents uh, or whatever, you know. And I'm, I'm glad they're talented now. Don't get me wrong. But that doesn't mean that you got to know where you fit. Here's the help. We've got the tech booth, the technicians out there. You never see these guys, okay. But without them, I don't, I don't have this. I don't have picture, you know, screen. So everybody is doing their part. Gives a help. And, and, and nobody is taking the glory here except God. Amen. Hebrews 13, 17, more on the spiritual. Obey them that have the rule over you. Okay, don't, don't get mistaken by this. The pastor is not your uh, dictator, the one, or the whatever, the, the apostle, the prophet, the teacher. They're not here to say, oh, do this, do that, do that. No, that's not what it is. Spiritually, God has given them the, the calling and the office to be the overseer, Okay. And normally these are people that are going to be mature in the word. They're going to be mature and um, be able to, and they know the word of God and be able to uh, share it. So this is obey them that have the rule over you and submit. Again, submit. 
To submit means to yield, to be weak, to surrender, submit yourself, yourselves. For they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. On the day of judgment, I'm going to have to stand with you. Or we might be kneeling, but um, I'm going to be with you because i got to give account. Did I speak the word to you or did I not? If I spoke the word to you, then Jesus is going to look at you. Why did you or why did you not obey the word of God? Then the blood is on your hand. But if I spoke the word, if I did not speak the word of God to you, and then he's not going to hold you responsible. I'm going to be held responsible. So any pastor called into the ministry, any apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, fivefold ministry are going to be judged by God whether they spoke the word or not. And, um, and, and and I, I pray that all of you are going to be courageous and bold, and you're going to speak the word of God. We had some, uh, we went through several issues, about seven different issues in a contemporary church, and some of this is tough that would cause a leader, a pastor, a bishop, uh, whatever, to back down and not say it because we want to be politically correct. But no, we don't want to be politically correct. We want to be men and women of God that are going to speak the truth uh, in love, always in love but in boldness and with courage. Amen? So, submit unto them. Yield unto them. You know, a lot of people come in from different denominations, right? Wow, in my church we did this and we did that. and we did. You know what? You know, like I said, there's only one denomination, and that is Christian. Somebody say Christian. Amen? And they were first called Christian, Christians in Antioch because... We ought to read, if the Holy Spirit is our teacher, he will only teach you one thing. He will not teach you 15 different doctrines or teachings. He is not confused. God is not confused, okay? When men start interpreting the Bible as opposed to receiving revelation, then we get doctrines, right? Different kinds. No, be one. There's one doctrine, the Word of God here. So that's the way we ought to be operating. So yield. You need to find, make sure, wherever you go, you may not be here, you know, you might be here for a little while, and then God is going to take you to a different place. Find out the church that's speaking the word of God. That's your first priority. Not, oh, wow, I love the praise and worship. I love the ambience of the church. Oh, the food is good. Amen. Hallelujah. No, the word of God going forth, right, lightly dividing the word of God. And it doesn't matter. God will pick the losers in life to be the pastor sometimes. These guys are losers, okay? Well, I got that. Like somebody told me, I ain't picked the losers, man. I'm like, I was ready to like, uh. but anyway, um, the word, okay? Yield to the word. You're not yielding to the pastor. You're yielding unto ultimately God, the Father. The word of God, Jesus Christ, right? We need to yield to the word of God. So throw the stuff out, throw the junk out, and be open to the fresh, pure word, the rhema, the revelation of the word of God. Philippians 2.12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, the apostle Paul went through um, on his missionary journeys, and he visited different places, many places, and he established many churches. And that's why you have uh, the book of Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Why? Because he's writing to these different churches in these different places, you know, in Galatia, Ephesus, uh, Philippi, Colossae. He's writing to churches they established and many, many more churches that were established. One of his fear was that his concerns was that when he left, then people would seep in and, and teach false doctrine, false teachings. If anything, that was his main biggest concern, the cares of the churches. And so he says, you know, he's talking to the church here in Philippi. And I believe he has a lot of confidence in them that they kept the words that he spoke, you know, the true words of God. And they, they obeyed it. They obeyed the word of God. And, and that's my fear. You know, a lot of people will come to this place and then spend a couple of years and then assignment, they will leave and they go to a different place or contracts in and we go to a different, you know, go back to your hometown, your country, and then what happens? What happens? You go to a church after that and then what? What, what, what do you do? 
you know, the saddest thing for a pastor is to hear that now you follow him in a cult. You follow in a cult. It's like, what happened? How come you didn't, how come you didn't learn? What, what, what were you doing all these years? Oh, well, oh. So that's my fear here. It's like Apostle Paul. Are you going to continue to obey the word of God when you leave here? You need to do that, okay? You need to hear. You need to listen very carefully because the devil is out there and he's going to throw all kinds of confusion in there. He's going to throw all, and everybody sounds flamboyant. I'm sorry. I, I'm just not flamboyant. I, I don't have it. But you know what? Every, every time I speak, I want to speak and rightly divide the word of God. I don't want to ever lead anyone astray. And I pray that you're going to be in spiritual alignment, that you're going to walk with the Lord God, okay? That there's going to be unity in this church. We need to endeavor, means to strive. It takes effort on your part in unity. And that begins with obedience, okay? Obedience is better than sacrifice. And then ultimately, when we are in obedience, we're in alignment, there is unity in the body of Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you that you love us. You sent your son, your only begotten son, who shed his blood that we may have all our sins washed away, that you can forgive us of our sins. You are ready, willing to forgive us, and that he, Jesus, sacrificed his body on the cross, was buried, and on that third day that miraculous day you raise him from the dead we thank you we love you lord and now as we take this time to remember with the lord's supper the holy communion father let us have hearts that are contrite let us have hearts that are humble that we repent of our sins that we confess of them lord and and we know that you forgive us if we confess our sins we are faith you are you are faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. With